Hurry up and buy. Hello YouTube, it's your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman, coming at you again with another YouTube video. And the title of this video is called, Passport Bros are Window Shoppers for Wives. They ain't wifing up or contributing to the country. And um, the way this video came about was, I was watching a variety of different videos done by some of the Passport Bros. I don't necessarily want to mention names, I don't necessarily want to call out a few people because they didn't necessarily, put it this way, they didn't do anything wrong in the process of them interviewing some people, but, but either way, there were a few people that came on their channel that said some very ignorant type things about the passport bros. And they kind of let them pass a little bit only because they were familiar with the people, but I kind of wanted to address it. And, uh, and also, um, tongue in cheek, you saw the beginning of the video where, uh, Marlon Wayne's is in a grocery store you know, just like anybody else, you want to go to a store, you want to look at a variety of different things. You want to see what you want to buy. Why he's there. You see the lady is rushing him. She's telling him to hurry up and buy pretty much when you're going to buy, when you're going to leave my store. And I, I, I put that video in there because it really mirrors the, the um, mentality of some of the women who are making these comments against the passport bro saying things like we're just going out there to just sleep around with women. We're not trying to wife up anybody or we're not contributing to the country. It really feels to me like a hurry up and buy situation. And I'm going to go into detail on that. Um, and I'm also also going to address the, the guests that came on the show with some of these passport bros. So let me start off by addressing that. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this whole video. So, Let's start with the first one. So first off, one of the passport bros, and you may may or may not know who I'm who I'm referring to, but anyway, he was interviewing this um, service guy in the army that um, really it was his wife. So really, service guy was in Japan. He met his wife there, and he was interviewing the service guy's wife. She was J Japanese, by the way. So as he's interviewing her, um, he asks he asks her, "What was your perception of black men?" before they came to your country. And what she said was, it was very like negative at first. She always thought that most of the black men that were there, including the service men, were just, um, for the most part, just sex tours. They just want to sleep around with the women. They're not trying to wife anybody up. Eventually, as you, as you know, she eventually married that black man. And when he asked her, she said, well, he seemed, he was like, he seemed to be a little bit different. So my whole thing I have about this whole situation is, and she's not, the, and that's why I'm going to tell you. There's a few other videos. My thing about it was, wh why is it that when the the men, the spe specifically the black man, came there, why is she automatically assuming that um, he just want to be that they'll sleep around with a bunch of women? And, and here's the thing: let's say even if he was there, my my whole issue is that before even black men were doing this, you have white men, you have Hispanic, men, you got men of all types of variety coming to that country, dealing with women, uh, doing the, uh, the, the playful play thing, d dealing with different types of women, uh, having sight you got all this going on. Why is this specifically just toward the black man? That that's what I didn't like. I didn't like that specifically. So that was, so that's that. Now one person can say, well, that's just her. That's just her opinion. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Now, right after that, um, maybe like a, this probably was like a few weeks earlier. I was on this other Passport Bros uh, channel. This guy I found out about on, I was, um, but I'm, I'm not, actually, I'm not going to mention names. But anyway, I was watching this channel. He's interviewing this woman for Columbia. And the guy, and the Passport Bro was asking her, why do you think like so many guys, they're just getting drugged and all this stuff like that. And then she was saying, she think that some of the people there, and specifically her, she was saying, she just feels like, Whenever the passport bros or like American guys, and this includes some of the my um, non-black listeners as well. When some of the American guys come there, she said that you're pretty much just going there to be a sex tourist. You just want to go and sleep around with women. You don't want to wife the women up. You're not contributing to the country. You're not going on tours. Uh, you know, for the most part, we don't contribute to that GDP at all. And, and again, when I, when I, when I saw that, I was just like, okay, so forget, so, so forget about the fact that 
regardless of our purpose that while we're there, um, the Uber, the Uber rides we pay for, the taxis we're paying for, the hotels that we're paying for, um, the restaurants, the meals at the restaurants we're paying for. Most people that go to uh, Latin America, even the even I'm willing to say even the men who are there for P for P, they're not just there for P for P. They do other stuff as well. You know, uh, I know plenty of people have done things such as going like going on hikes, um, specifically like in, you know, um, some of these countries like Costa Rica, um, whitewater rafting, zip lining, doing all kinds of activities. But because she saw a few guys or let's say even if let's say even it was a, a stream, a stream of guys coming in to like the clubs or something like that, that's not the only activity that they're doing there. And um, so that's so that's that that's that. So that um, we had that piece. Um, and just recently, and I had already did a video on this, the, the video before this video, I was, uh, reviewing the Austin Holloman video in which there was an El Salvadorian woman on there. And she was saying, I agree with the Paso bros. I like what you guys are doing. If you come to our country and you're looking for a wife, I'm okay with that. I'm down with it. I just don't like the fact y'all come in here and then y'all just want to, um, sleep around with the women. Y'all don't want to wife them up. Uh, I saw a few videos where guys were talking about going there to do this. I don't like that whole, whole situation. Um, and I had talked about it before. So, so here, so, so I, I say that to say what's, what's going, what, what do all three of these th different things have in common? And then you'll, then you will completely understand why I put that video clip in the front of Marlon Wayne's and that situation there. What do these all have in common? It's a lot of penis policing, all this penis policing. And, and I've already told you before, it's not just black men who are doing this. It's, and before they were passport bros, there were men, several men doing that, especially if you want to talk about like the Philippines, where I believe a lot of servicemen were just there. And they specifically set up some areas there where men can kind of, for the most part, get their rocks out, go party and do everything else, go do, and go do everything else. That's why that mo majority of that thing was there because from what I, from what I've been, um, reading about, hearing about for other passport, like not even passport bros, people who have just been there in general, they talked about that area in general was set up because the service men didn't have much to do. So they actually set up bars and establishments there so they could actually have entertainment there. So this was going on before passport bros. You know, so I'm going to tell you what a lot of this is. I'm going to tell you what a lot of this is. All this is, is a lot of these women, especially like the Salvadorian women, as you, as you, if anyone, if you've seen the previous video, here's the thing about her. She, she, she's cute. I, I, I give credit where credit is due. She's a cute girl. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie or smear her. But here's the thing. She's, she's basic. I would say it that way. She's about maybe like a six or something like that. She's a six. Now, here's the thing. If you bring her to America where 60% of the women are, are overweight and obese, yeah, she might look like a seven or eight. So, and she knows that when she gets here, then automatically her rating is going to go up. But in her own country, she's very basic. The other thing that was so weird about that is she said El Salvador. Most of the passport bros in general, we're not really checking for El Salvador like that. I, the reason I've avoided that country is because uh, I believe it has the highest murder rate in the, um, that country has the highest murder out of all the South American countries. So I specifically avoided that country. And I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of the, um, uh, immigrants that have been f coming towards the border. A lot of them have been coming from um, uh, El Salvador, Guatemala, and excuse me, I pronunciation on this. I believe it's uh, Nicaragua, if I'm saying it correctly. Those three countries specifically have had the most coming towards that border. And that's where she's from. So most people in general, they're not really going there. Most people in general have heard it is very dangerous there. Now I'm sure there's probably some um guys have been traveling here and there but it's not it's not to the degree as it is in brazil or colombia so this is just cap what this is is and oh, here's the other thing you need to know about this woman she's a single mother she's a single mother the el salvador el salvadorian woman is a single mother i believe she has two children for what i heard so of course you already can see the man hating is in her now i don't know if it was an american guy that did it or some el salvador some uh guy from el salvador that did it but either way you can you can directly see that she's been played by a lot of men so she already has that chip on her back when she sees men quote unquote getting the better end of women when she sees us with photos of women and we're dating this woman we're dating that woman her attitude is just her and by why don't y'all just choose a woman why y'all playing this woman and then playing this woman and then playing this woman you need to just 
commit to a woman and just deal with her. The reason for that is obviously she was uh, unfortunately strung along by several different guys. They didn't wife her up. And as it turns out, one of them have impregnated her, got her children, and then that guy either is no longer in her life, she chased him away, or whatever else. Either way, she has she has a um, chip on her shoulder on her shoulder towards men who have options. It's all about options. Same thing with that woman in Colombia talking about y'all don't contribute, y'all don't do this. Uh, when I saw the woman um, on his channel, she was uh, slightly overweight. She had a pretty face. And here's the thing, for her to say that all the guys there in Columbia are just going and just being sex tours, what I think personally happened, because the, the guy that was interviewing her, he kind of has like sugar, he kind of deals with sugar babies and that kind of thing in Columbia. So I'm willing to say that she probably is of that same cloth. I can't prove it, but I believe she's of that same cloth. And it's probably been some guy she's been chilling with. Messing, messaging them the guy's probably been lying to her saying he wants to wife up he has no intention of doing that so her thing is she wants to say that we're just there and we're not wifing up people because of the guy she chose to be with and as you know a lot of times unfortunately this and not just in america a lot of times there are women this shows you across the board in different countries dating men who are kind of out i'm not gonna say outside of the league but these are men in general who have lots of options so they're not just going to just settle down that quickly you know, so, um, th that's that. And, um, the other thing about that was, um, and also who was, who was that I was watching? Oh, I, I believe the brother's name is Wyatt Tessie. I was watching one of his videos and he was interviewing, um, he, he was, uh, reviewing this video about, there's this female YouTuber. I, I believe her name is like Jenny, Jen on the block or something like that. It's this Hispanic woman. Uh, she got in a big beef with, uh, Tariq Nasheed some time ago and um, anyway she's been coming heavy at the past for bros saying all types of negative stuff um, y'all just tricks the women don't really like y'all saying um, what was the other thing she said um, yeah just on, on pretty much just on that line oh that's the other thing she said she said um, y'all like these countries gotta start saying uh, asking the little bit the little uh, $40 y'all give for the Airbnb, uh, is that really worth it? Is it really worth her having y'all there? And all y'all doing is just sleeping around with chicks and tricking. Is it really worth that? Y'all really, you know, these little, uh, you know, cheap Airbnbs and the little cheap dinners y'all get. The countries need to really evaluate that and decide whether they want you there or not. You're not really doing anything there. That was whole whole thing. And here's the thing about her. This woman is about, I believe she's 48. She's 48, post wall. Uh, she was on um, Kendra G's channel talking about she wants the three sixes six feet tall six uh six figures and of course this thing needs to be sick above six inches that that's that was what she was saying and this woman is in her 40s and she's thinking like this so you can obviously tell i hate to say this i, I really had to go here but she's been somewhat passed around she has not been married she had, she's very, very angry. And for some reason, it's always aimed towards black men for some reason. And I suspect she dated a whole bunch of black men. They didn't wife her up. She's very upset about that. So now she's on the passport rolls. And any guy she sees that in her mind is, put his way, getting the better end of the stick, I guess, when it comes to her, went towards women, basically men who have options. She's completely against that. She's talking about maybe there should be some legislation and all this other crap like that. Now, meanwhile, keep in mind that Dennis Sperlin recently just exposed that over in Jamaica and Kenya, you got so many American, in fact, more, I believe it's more women travel than men. So many American women, Western women going to Jamaica, going to Kenya, sleeping with underage men. None of this is exposed. None of this is exposed. Um, I believe I even saw um, a video once in which there was a woman documenting her uh, sex tourism and um, I, believe, I believe it was like, it might've been a country of Turkey or one of these countries. She would go there with her daughter, sleep with a lot of the young men there. Now these men were of age to, to, to her credit. They were of age. But the whole fact is they're doing exactly the same thing. I'm sure many of you have seen nine day fiance and, 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 and also uh, yeah, nine day fiance. So let's not um, point and say this is only men that's doing this. This is just getting kind of ridiculous. Because when you affect the men, you start doing all this stuff, trying to pass legislation. That's also going to affect the women as well. Keep in mind also, let's just say 
worst come to worst, you you even want to pass some legislation or something. Um, I don't know, ban- banning men from going to certain countries. That's not. That, I mean, it's not going to do anything. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, technically, technically, we're not supposed to be going to Cuba. We're not supposed to be going to Cuba. But there's a loophole. I believe it's called you support the Cuban people. You can actually go there. I've been to Cuba. You can go there. Even before I knew about this, there was a there was a, a show I was watching by uh, Michael Moore. He actually took a boat from Florida. He he went all the way down to Cuba by boat, visited some of the people there, and he went all the way back. And I say that to say this. Well, I'm going to end it with this. This is the other thing. When I came back from Cuba, when I was reading about it, people were saying, you got to keep all your documents, all your receipts, and a, 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 a and a complete agenda of everything you did there. When I went through, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, customs. When I went through customs, there was a long line of people. You had to have, a, it was probably was at least, I'm going to say at least 400 people in line. They only had about three, four custom uh, border agents there. Only thing he asked me was, uh, when I got there, and I told him I went to Cuba. What did you do there? I said, I went to some museums. Oh, uh, what museums did you go to? I told him museums. Okay, have a nice day. He gave me, you know, gave me my passport back. Passport back. That was it. So what I'm saying to you is this: 400 people online, they don't have time or the resources to go that thorough. If they don't have the time or resources to be that thorough about you going to a country that we're not supposed to even really be going to. Um, do you think they're gonna have the time to really do research and spies in there to check on every single American male to see where he's going here and there in a country, basically in a continent that's bigger than the United States? Every man is not every passport bro is not going to Brazil, every passport bro is not going to Colombia. You got Panama, you got Costa Rica, you got Ecuador, you got Argentina, you got Chile, you got um, you know, uh you you can go to Jamaica. I mean, it's so much space. It's so they're not doing that. That they're just not. Uh, you know, you you if you can believe that if you want to, they're just not doing that. Okay, they're not doing it. And in many cases, in many of these countries, when myself and many of your passport bros go there, we blend in with the people anyway. The only way you really know, especially when I was in um Brazil, only way you really know that I wasn't Brazilian is if I opened my mouth. So how how would you go? How would you even manage that? That wouldn't even make any sense. They're not going to do that. That's not, I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous to even think that. Keep in mind that after that, when you go, people don't know this, technically in Thailand, prostitution is illegal. Technically, technically, when you go there, and I've been there, when you go there, um, they'll do raids. They'll raid the place, close it down. I promise you, two weeks later, that same bar will be open back up. It will be under name, other another name, same people will be there. You, you got to ask, why would they do that? It's because the government knows it's contributing to their country. And not only that, it doesn't make sense for them. If they don't have jobs for the people, they don't have, if they don't have anything else for them, it doesn't really make any sense. The only reason they rated it was for political theater because they know if feminists, these people are putting a spotlight on it, they got to at least put a band-aid to make it seem like they're doing something. They know about it. They don't care. Same thing with Brazil. You don't think the Brazilian president and some, some people in government there don't know that there's American uh, men from the UK, Canada coming down there uh, doing the P for P for P scene. You don't think they know that? They know that. Not just them. The the men in the surrounding countries from Argentina. All these men are coming there. You probably you even got politicians that engage in this. So that's not. Uh, I mean, it's just that's not that's not blow this out of proportion. It's not going to happen. That's what I'm telling. You. It's not going to happen. All right. So, because even in Thailand, with it being illegal there, you still see Americans still uh, sleeping with women there, correct? Yes, you do. That that's not going to do anything. If they if they know, put it this way, if the government knows that by removing that or uh, them monitoring the American men, Canadian men, men from the UK coming into your country uh, by them putting some type of strict restriction in, uh, put it this way, it would definitely hurt their economy. Um, and, and put it this way, I'm not saying, um, you know, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm an advocate for people getting married, finding a significant other, that kind of thing. But in defense of even the men who are promiscuous, promiscuous, do P for P or whatever else, keep in mind that they contribute heavy to those economies there. Um, most people don't know this and, um, I'm gonna tell it to you. Do you know what, what Latin American country, 
um, benefits the most from tourism. Do you know what country that is? The Dominican Republic. It has benefited the most out of all South American countries from tourism. And majority of the time when you see the passport bros, what country are they in? In the Dominican Republic. Now, if you tell the passport bros, whether they come from the UK or the United States, hey, we're going to put some uh, things into place and we're going to make it hard for you to come to the Dominican Republic. Um, and, 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 and those men, even the ones that my subscribers suddenly say, you know what, we're not going in anymore. What would happen to that economy? What would happen to that economy? It would crush it. 10% of their GDP comes from tourism. And uh, and just to give you a sense of what that's like, I believe they were saying um, in general, when the United States, when we went through our pandemic, our GDP shrunk by like 19%. So, and tourism contributes, contributes to 10% of that. And if you say a majority of us are doing that and majority of the economy benefits, benefits from that, imagine if we just left and we just said, you know what, we ain't come back anymore or you, or you banned us somehow. What would that do to their economy? Seeing, seeing that we create so many, we help create so many jobs there from the restaurants to the hotels, to the taxis, to the Ubers, to all, all the little street vendors there. When you're on the beach, you got a guy coming up to you. He's selling you sunglasses. What would happen if those passport bros wasn't there? Even the ones that engage in the P4P would we'll collapse their economy. If you remember during, during the uh, pandemic, countries like Jamaica, Mexico, they couldn't close. They didn't close their borders to uh, foreigners, even even the ones from America. They kept the border open. You know why that was? Because if Americans them stopped coming into there, even the guys who are there for the P for P, which you don't like, you know what happened? It would have collapsed their economy. They are not going to be able to do it. That's what I'm telling you. Any here's the thing: if you're not willing to go to a communist um, way of living where everyone drives the same car, same type of house, you're not going to get rid of P for P. It, it'll never happen. There are always going to be some who, who have and some that do not. Now, in those countries which don't have a lot, and keep in mind that the, the reason that these countries are destabilized is because of the United States. That's why they're in a the condition that they're in. So since, you know, since um, put it this way, are, are you willing to uh, decrease the value of your, of your U.S. dollar by at least half of it to fix these countries so that doesn't happen? Probably not. I'm talking specifically to the women. Would you like, would you like your dollar to be cut in half, the price of it? Inflation stays the same, but the price, inflation costs everything stays the same, but your whole, um, your whole income gets cut in half. Would you like to do that just to fix things in all these other countries? Since you have a problem with password bros, men with options, having options. And keep in mind, um, and here's the thing about that too. Keep in mind that, um, when, um, the password bros come down there, that, uh, keep this in mind. Some of the password bros are actually wifing up women, even some of the women with children, even some of the women with children. Now, I think it's better if you can find a woman who doesn't have children, but they're even wifing up women that who have children. In many cases, the guys who, who, who marry or date, not even just girl, not even just make them their girlfriend, but just date some of the women there. You don't think that when some of these girls they're dating, ask them to help them pay like their phone bill or help buy them food or something like that. Remember also, I'm going to say he bought, he bought some girl, some groceries. You don't think even the P4P guys, they're contributing and helping the women out. You just think we're just we're just cutting them cold, cut and dry, get what we can for them, kick them to the curve. Keep in mind that um, before the password bros are there, even besides us, the many of these countries they engage in P4P as well, and they don't have they barely have the money to engage in the P4P. So if they barely have the money to engage in P4P, do you think that they're doing things like buying the girls groceries and looking after their family and paying their phone bill? And in some cases, there was a guy on, on um, 90 Fiance that paid the girls rent. He took care of all her children. She had three children. He took care of all of that. You think the guys in her country in Colombia are doing that? Nope. Nope. We come there. We take care of the women. We look after the women. Many of the many guys there, including myself, if we don't have a wife, we have a girlfriend, or we have at least a girl that's our main girl that we stick with. Yeah, here and there, we may dip and dab and, and pee for pee. But here's the thing. Just like Dennis Sperling has said this, and I agree with him. At some point, I'm willing to say all of the passport bros at some point are going to settle down. I can't say all, but majority of them. You know why? Because P for P to me is just like eating candy all day. At some point, you're going to get tired of eating candy. You're going to want some substance, something that stick to your ribs, a family. You're going to want children. So yeah, we are eventually, all of us, majority of us, 
95% of the pass bros eventually are going to settle down, either have a wife and some guys who say who, who, who don't like the whole uh, state marriage type thing. They're going to have a girlfriend. They're going to have one of those. I have one of those. I have a girlfriend. I have a girl I stick by. Even though I go down to these countries, even though I go down into these countries, I have a main one that I stick by. So all of us have some type of substance and eventually want to have, if anything else, even if it's not a girlfriend, at least they're going to have this one main girl that they stick by, they take out on dates and they, they uh, spoil her and, and treasure her and that kind of thing. I already, I have that. And so do most of the past, even the guys who are in, they, engaging in P4P, uh, I'm sure even also Holloman, there's probably some main girl he's dealing with when he goes to Brazil, he mainly takes her out and, you know, and she shows him around and that kind of thing. All the guys have this. And I'm going to end also by saying this as well. Um, keep in mind that, uh, you know, and the reason I called it, uh, I, I put that clip at the beginning that says Herb and Bi. So, so here's the thing they want you to do, um, Passport Bros. This is, what, this is what the issue is. And this is not, and I'm also going to include some of my non-black uh, subscribers in this as well, because this, this includes you as well. This is what they want you to do. They want you to, um, and this is the three girls I talked about. When you come down to that country, they want you to wife up the first girl you see. As soon as you come into the country, as soon as you step into the DR, as soon as you step into Colombia, as soon as you step into Brazil, the first girl you see, oh, she's pretty, as soon as you get her number, you're supposed to only be dealing with her. No one else. You're not supposed to talk to anybody else. Only deal with her. And then when and then you're supposed to try to settle down with her. And, and that's supposed to be it. And again, that's because these three women I mentioned, even the girl, even that woman, Jen, they have been passed around. They probably had some guy promised him in the world. He didn't give him the world. So now they're upset and they're mad. So for that reason, you're supposed to herb and buy. Why are you wasting time? Why are you dating? How long does it take you to find a wife? How long does it take you, does it take you to find a girlfriend? You need to herb and get a girl. We don't get the right, just like in, just like any other market. When I, when I go into a grocery store, just like Marlon Wayne's, I don't get to look and say, well, dang, uh, I kind of feel like having a Snickers. But you know what? That Milky Way is looking really good. But you know what? I see a honey bun over there. So I pick up the honey bun. I look at the back of the honey bun. I see all the grease. I say, uh, I don't know if this is going to vibrate my stomach. So I put it back. And then I go and I go over and I see uh, um, some cupcakes. I'm like, hmm, those, those might be nice. But then I look at it. I, I start reading the health things of it. And it has a whole bunch of sugar. I'm like, I'm not trying to have a sugar crash. And then these three women in the background saying, Herb, buy something. You taking too long. You ain't trying to buy. You just a window shopper. You ain't trying to buy nothing. You ain't contributing to anything. Uh, first off, I'm going to eventually get something. And uh, and by the way, I mean, um, in the store. Uh, I'm bringing other business as well. As you can see, my videos are drawing other password bros to come here to this marketplace in Colombia, Brazil. I'm bringing other people as well. So I'm bringing you business as well. So I don't get the right to, to, to look around the store and make a selection. Even if I go in, I say, you know what? I tried all these different ones. I don't like this store. I don't like this, this Colombian store. Let me go to a Brazilian store. So as I'm leaving the Colombian store, see, you, you ain't going to buy nothing anyway. That's what we're talking about. You ain't nothing but a, a window shopper i.e. A, a, a tourist, a sex, in this case, they might even call you a sex tourist, you just came to be on sex tour, you didn't come to really wife up anything, uh, that's not the case, I, I have options, variety of different stores, you got Brazil, you got Colombia, you got Argentina, you got Dominican Republic, you got Thailand, I don't get to go around and look and find the woman that's perfect for me, I don't get to see what woman I'm a perfect match for, so just because I go into there, I have to automatically buy something, I, and I can't even look at the ingredients or look at the packaging and say, you know what? I like this, but it's not for me. I don't get the right to do that. But the women, but the women, Western women who go down into Jamaica or Kenya sleeping with underage men, they get the right to choose who they want to deal with. Not just in the States, but even in those countries, they get to, they get to choose who they want to deal with. They get to make, uh, it kind of reminds me of. So and, and that's what and that's what they mean by being disrespectful because in, in their mind, especially towards black men, you're not supposed to have anything. You're not supposed to have any selection. You're on the bottom. You should be lucky. You should be lucky to deal with their with their uh, with the women who are threes and fours in their country because in your country the women treat you like crap. So when you come to their country, you're supposed to just get whatever scraps are thrown at you. How dare you? How dare you have a standard in their country? Because in your country you don't have any standards. You don't get anything. So don't come to our country having standards and saying, I don't want to date. Uh, I don't like women who are beasts here. 
I want to find a woman who's slim, you know, has pretty hair, that kind of thing. How dare you talk like that in our country? You should just settle down with the first person you get. That's pretty much what they want you to do. That's why I don't like the police, the penis policing, whether it's the United States or whether it's in these other countries. I can spend my money or my time wherever I want to. My biggest thing for a lot of the guys listening is, just like Dennis Sperlin said, as long as it's legal, I'm for it. I support you as long as it's legal. You know, don't, don't, as they say, um, the things you don't do in the country is don't, don't go looking for drugs. Don't go looking for underage women and don't get, and don't get involved in politics. Those are the three things. A lot of the old passport OGs have told me stay away from those three things, avoid the politics, avoid underage girls, and don't go looking for their domestic product, i.e. cocaine, all that kind of stuff. Stay away from it. That's what they told me. So I would encourage you guys to do the same. As long as it's legal, even the guys who engage in P4P, I support you and mainly because not only have I engaged in it, but you as a man, American Western man, you should be able to do just like anybody else. You should be able to do just like those women who go down to Jamaica, Kenya. You should be able to do the same exact thing. Now, I, 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 and I also agree with Dennis and this, and I've already said this. P for P is just like eating candy all day. Eventually, you're going to want some substance. You're going to want a family. You're going to want a woman to settle down with. You're going to want a woman to commit to eventually. But I mean, but telling that to a passport bro who's 25, I mean, come on now. Like, I mean, when you're that age, you want to at least, you, you at least want to go out there and see what's out there. You don't want to just settle on the first thing you see. When I go to, uh, when I go to uh, Foot Locker and a guy approaches me and say, hey, you need to buy this shoe. Yeah, it might be a nice shoe, but do, don't I get the right to look around and see what's out there and find something that's good fit for me? Just like any other man. Just like any other man. Don't I mean, and, and, and to add to that, I'm going to end on this because I don't want to keep this video too long. If you remember, in the United States, you had Lori Harvey. You got Kim Kardashian. You, you got, uh, there's a woman that was Paris Hilton, Tia Tequila. And people don't remember this, this woman. There was a woman called Vida Guerrera. She's a model. She actually was born in Cuba. Now, most people saw her, including myself, you saw her in rap videos. She was born in Cuba, but when she came to the United States, did she just settle for any guy that, that on a girl scale would be a one, two, or three? No, she wanted the top guys. She wanted the top guys. She wanted the guys make the guys who were celebrities. And she went from one celebrity to another celebrity, then this celebrity. No one said anything about that. She got the right to have her options, to weigh her options and say, I don't want to date this guy. I want to date this guy. Women didn't have any problem with that. But they got a problem with the average guys having op options overseas and saying, hey, yeah, I may have dated this girl for like three months, but you know what? It's not working out. Let me try something else. Let me, maybe I need to fly to Panama See what the culture is like there. Maybe there's a girl that advise me there. You know what? Maybe I need to go to Japan. We don't get that right for some reason. Think about Lori Harvey dissing all these high value men. Like, I mean, like, like they're nothing for the most part. And that's what we're supposed to self-improve to, to get to. And she's has a, I could take it or leave it type attitude towards those men. So just, so just think, so just think about that. They have basically, let me end it on this. This, this is what they want to happen. And, and I'm going to end it on this. This is what they want. They want an imbalance. They want for the women, whether in the United States or overseas, they want them to have options, but you have little or no options. They want the women to have all the options to date who they want, when they want, but they want you to have limited or no options. You can only date this type of woman. You date the woman we promote you to date. So we want, so we want to put on... Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition, this obese Asian woman in America, and you're supposed to date that. We'll make that the standard. You have to date that. We don't get to choose. That's what they want. That's what that El Salvador woman is mad about. That's what that Colombian woman is mad about. And that's what that, that woman, Jen from the block, is mad about. They don't want you to have options. You should give all your money and attention and time to them, and you get nothing in return. That's why to all the passport bros out there, not just the guys who are going out there, uh, for wives, that's one thing too. Um, but the guys also who are just looking for a girlfriend, the guys who engage for P for P, or even the guys who just, um, you know, maybe you just, yeah, or like maybe you're just down there for regular tourism, or even to to, to to do to do business or something like that. Either way, I support all the passport bros 
whatever whatever your reason is for there my whole thing is that you should have the right just like everybody else and no one should be penis policing you if they're not willing to penis police everybody else that that's my whole my whole thing on that so i support you i i should i support your brothers i'm gonna end on that and uh and so tell me what you think in the comments about this whole situation um yeah tell me what you think in the comment section uh please subscribe to my channel if you have not hit the notification bell hit the thumbs up and until next time, this is your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman, signing off.